I want to advocate three. Uh, I want to be an advocate for three uh, particular points today. Number one, I want to advocate for more area studies, and I'll share with you some stories why area studies is so important. Number two, I would like to advocate for more China study on Southeast Asia, particularly Malaysia. And number three, I want to advocate for more Malaysia study on China, on contemporary China. The Nanyang Yuan, or the Research School of Southeast Asian Studies at Xiamen University is very well known. It's well known and it was established in 1956, and it's well known to many of us because of the work and uh, the research that has been conducted over the years. And among some of us, uh, they are also uh, your PhD graduate, uh, one of whom, uh, Lan Zhonghua, I see seated at the back, my former staff. So the, the relationship between uh, Nanyang Yuan and Malaysia, as well as uh, with ICS, has been a, long, a long-standing relationship. And of course, as you pointed out, uh, Mr. Tan Ka Ki's relationship with Xiamen University is also unique. Let me first begin by sharing, some, sharing my views about uh, area studies. Area studies is of, often very peculiar existence within the contemporary university system because the contemporary university system focuses on disciplines and area studies is often uh, an abandoned child, not known to be placed anywhere. So Ben Anderson, in his memoir, A Life Beyond Boundaries, said that when he was uh, Developing his career, he was a, he he speak, he spoke uh, in, uh, with Indonesian. He spoke Tagalog. He spoke Thai, and uh, but he was no place in the university system until he published Imagine Commun Communities. But Imagine Communities would not be published uh, with, without the experiences in Southeast Asia. It was his deep experiences in Southeast Asia that he published. Uh, he was able to publish uh, Imagine Communities. And Imagine Community was published, and also at the, almost the uh, same time uh, when the Soviet Union was about to end. Suddenly, you see, by, by the time in my 50s, Ben Anderson said, I found myself, my position completely changed. Suddenly, because of the end of the Soviet Union, when nation became important and nationalism became important, Suddenly, I became a theorist, not just an area studies figure. Ben Anderson's experience uh, was difficult because of the way we organize university. But I am advocating more area studies because it's so important. My personal life has been uh, intertwined with many experiences of uh, uh, interesting stories coming from area studies. I graduated from the Australian National University. I did a political science degree, but also a thesis, uh, in, uh, I, um, uh, an honors degree with the Asian Studies faculty, with a thesis researching on the Islamic party in Malaysia. For Malaysians, you know the, the irony of it, but I actually researched on past. Um, recently, Professor Harold Crouch passed away on 27th of August at the age of uh, 83. I was only his intern, so I was only spending a bit of time with him, but not, not really much. But uh, for people who know him in this university, and also in UKM, the National University of Malaysia, Harold Crouch was in UM in 1974, and starting to teach in University of university Kebangsaan, Malaysia, in Bahasa, he's an Australian, taught in Bahasa, and almost the first person who to teach political science and set up the political science and taught there from 1976 to 1985. And subsequently, Harry Crouch came back in 1988 to 1990. Harry Crouch was a very interesting character because he focuses so much on area studies. And one day he was telling my friend, uh, he said, Say we as area studies uh, specialists, let's go to the field, to feel the field. After that, you come back to shop for theories. Right after in university, we are organized around theories. 
But he said, you, you need to be in the field to understand what is going on before you ter terrorize. And I think that is the beauty of uh, area studies. Harold Crouch, together with some of my teachers, belonged to that generation in Australia that was linked to Cornell. So like Ben Anderson, Ben Anderson was in, uh, in Cornell. And my supervisor, Dr. John Funston, was also was a student in Monash, but his supervisor, her fit, was a, was a PhD uh, graduate from Cornell. Cornell, as you know, was the main uh, Southeast Asian studies uh, passion in, in the United States. So John Funston was born in 1947. By 1968, he was told by her fit, who's the almost uh, the most important scholar in Australia at that time on Southeast Asia, he was told by her fifth to come to Kuala Lumpur to do field work. And when John came to Kuala Lumpur, her fifth told him to see a young man who was also born in 1947. So John arrived in, uh, in KL, stayed in a lousy hotel in Jalan Petaling, Petaling Streets. And there was a young man who came with a motorbike. Uh, both of them 21 years old. So he came and then uh, chatted and made friends. A young man was called uh, Anwar Ibrahim, our Prime Minister. By then, while he was only 21 years old, Anwar was really quite famous among Muslim students. So John came to interview uh, Anwar back in 19, December 1968. And the last time John, John came to Malaysia was uh, in March 2009, I accompanied John to see Anwar uh, when he was still in opposition. Actually, the other beautiful story that I, I like to share, which I have never shared before, I have never written, written about it before. In 2003, I was studying at ANU. One day, one of my professors, Dr. Virginia Hooker, ran to me. We bumped into each other and then she, she ran up and said, Chen Tong, you know who wrote me a letter? The letter has no written address. It was a very simple envelope. And that simple envelope uh, was addressed to Dr. Virginia Hooker. She said she almost threw it away. But she opened up, found that it was a letter written by Anwar Ibrahim to Virginia Hooker when Anwar Ibrahim was in the prison. It was a five-page letter uh, that Prime Minister Anwar, who was at that time a prisoner, wrote to Virginia Hooker. It was about the five or six books and articles that Virginia Hooker has written. And Anwar read all of them and wrote a long letter explaining how he viewed some of the points in Virginia Hooker's explanation or her books. And I thought that was fascinating. Area studies is not just about scholar, earning a PhD, getting a job. Area studies, very often, is a commitment. It's a commitment of scholars spending time investing in person-to-person -person relationship and building a lifelong relationship in the field. And I think uh, it is important that we do more for area studies, and I applaud you for this effort. Uh, this is a very important effort for area studies. I would also like to advocate for more China studies on Southeast Asia, and particularly on Malaysia. As US became richer after the war, in, after the war in 1945, US tried to develop Southeast Asian studies, but did not, did, not, did not develop enough for the US establishment to understand Southeast Asia. And the end result was, the US establishment fell into this idea called domino theory and was stuck in Vietnam for many, many years. It is important for China, as China rises to become a major power, it's important for China to understand Southeast Asia and in, to understand the diversities of Southeast Asia and the complexity of Southeast Asian societies so that the leadership and the population 
can genuinely appreciate the sentiment and nuances of various Southeast Asian societies and countries. And it is in this context that what Xiamen University is doing and what Nanyang Yuan is doing uh, is very important. And there should be a lot more people working on helping China to understand Southeast Asia and to understand different societies in Southeast Asia. You have a great role to play, and what you do has huge consequences on helping China to understand its most important neighbors at its doorstep, uh, so that China can grow as a major power in a, in a confident yet fully empathetic to its neighbors, in a way that is fully empathetic to the conditions of its neighbors in Southeast Asia, and China would be a major power with full understanding of how Southeast Asia as a society is. And finally, I want to advocate for more Southeast Asian studies of China, particularly more Malaysian studies of China and contemporary China that is so important to every one of us. China is the most important neighbor in this region for most of the, for all the Southeast Asian uh, societies. And China is moving very fast and growing very fast. Just yesterday, the state administration of market regulation from China, the, 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 what they call the head or the minister of this particular de department came to see me. And I was surprised because of, this is a new, new organization amalgamated from seven different units in China, seven different uh, what they call bureaus and organizations and ministry. And it was only established in 2018. I think we don't understand enough. I also don't understand enough. My ministry probably also doesn't understand enough. But when it was explained to me, when the minister explained to me this SAMR, the role of this SAMR, it is very interesting because China has now come to an understanding that capitalism has to be balanced. There needs to be balance between uh, development and safety. Food safety, buildings safety, uh, what they call industrial products safety, and multiple part of it, uh, of how, how we ensure that it's the safety of uh, products and also processes. It is also about a balance between efficiency and fairness. So this, this organization is also to ensure regulatory fairness so that every company, every firm has a, a level playing field and there's no monopolism within the business sector. I don't think that many people understand in this country. I, I'm setting this as an example because we as a society in Malaysia, we need to really understand the changing nature of China and the differences between our organization, the way we organize our society. When I was in defense ministry, I was a, a short-lived uh, deputy defense minister. When I visited China, I realized that within our organization, sometimes we may not necessarily understand that in China, the main organization for the armed forces is the Central Committee, Central Military Com Committee, CMC. The Ministry of Defense is just a communication unit, unlike how Western countries organize its state. And these are nuances that we in Malaysia need to understand and we need to build on, build on knowledge so that we can continue to engage China most effectively, both at the government level and also at the private level. Uh, private sector as well as pu public sector. We need knowledge about contemporary China and we need a lot of knowledge about contemporary China so that we can engage most effectively. So with these points, uh, again, I wish you well. I hope this uh, workstation will, will be a great success and will encourage a lot more co collaboration between the two universities, University of Malaya and Xiamen University, as well as many other universities. Thank you very much.